and welcome to Shaping the Irish Flute, the podcast about Irish flute players around the world who are shaping today's Irish flute style. This week, we're joined by Martha Guiney from Northern Ireland. She's a great flute player who has recently been awarded the BBC Young Talent Platform Award, and she's learned Irish flute with Seamus Tanzi, so she has a lot to say about Irish flute. If you like the show, feel free to sign up for the newsletter on the website, irishflutelessons.com, on the Facebook page, Irish Flute Lessons, and on the YouTube channel, Irish Flute Lessons, to receive our upcoming updates. Thanks for watching. So we are today with Martha Guiney, a flute player from County Down. Uh, thanks you, thank you for being with us today, Martha. Thanks for having me, Michelle. It's great to be here. It's, it's, it's a great pleasure. Um, I'm going to start with the, the easy and the, and the straightforward question. Uh, can you tell us more about yourself, your early you know, days and years on, on the flute? Yeah, well, I suppose uh, similar to you know majority of other flute players. Um, started on the tin whistle. Um, I think I was about four years of age. Um, my family always had a massive interest in music. And we were very fortunate that the, just the wee village where I'm from, up the road, not even about five minutes, um, there's two sisters, the Burns sisters, Ursula and Claire Burns, very talented, and, and they've got a great name for themselves in the Irish traditional music circuit. So they're fiddle players, and Ursula's a fiddle player, and Claire's a great whistle player as well. So my sister and I both went up to the two of them for lessons. Um, I did the fiddle for a while. I stuck out the, at the whistle mainly. Um, and I suppose I always had... The desire for the flute you know and um, mom and dad loved the flute as well and i think that was always the the go to you know the goal but you know yourself you you develop on on the whistle first to get the, the finger the finger work all all correct um and then i was extremely lucky that at the time i think i was about seven years of age uh the great seamus tansy moved up north and he literally moved to about a place about 25 minutes not even to where I'm from. So mum started me with Seamus um, when I was seven and Seamus took me under his wing. Um, and it was really from there then that the, the flute journey started with Seamus. Um, and then, you know, once I'd done lessons with Seamus for a few years, um, my sister and I, we both started like Armagh Pipers Club with the Valleys down in Armagh. Um, and then it wasn't long, I guess, before like you know the music became, you know, my main the, the main outlet in my family for like social socializing and that. Um, so yeah, that's that's mainly where the the flute the flute journey started. And then you know what I had a lot of local sessions. My dad's from South Armagh, um, mm -hmm. and there's a great collection of trad musicians from there. So we would run up there on Fridays or Saturday nights most weekends, um, and. Most learned most of my tunes there, or even picked up wee tips from other musicians there. You know, so. All right. Um, what was it like to be learning with Seamus? Because obviously he's like, a, I mean, a great flute player. We all know about him. But what was it like from your experience to you know be learning the flute with him? I, I mean, like it, it was an honor. You know, I'm I'm very I feel very blessed still to this day. You know, Seamus would still come up. He still lives um, in the north. And he would still come up in the train. I'd get him in the train station and come over to the house and have a lock of tunes. And um, I still, to this day, feel like I'm, you know, I'm still learning from from him. Um, and it was just great to have him as a teacher, you know, uh, just to have him right from the start. Because you know how hard it is to pick up and tone in that, and embouchure in the flute. And we just, with Seamus, you know, we delve straight in. But he had such a big personality, such a character that he made the lesson so much fun and made it so much, you know, so interesting um, and loads, lots and lots of tips from him. So I was so, so blessed to have Seamus, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I can imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so fast forward 2020, can you tell us more about yourself today and, and like what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, well, I'm currently teaching um, the flutes so it's it's lovely to you know be able to pass on what I've learned, and I mean we're all still learning. I think everyone's still learning now. But what I've learned so far, it's it's nice to pass that on to even the generation younger than me who are starting out now. You know, and just give them what I've what I've learned throughout the years from Seamus and other teachers. Um, and I'm also recording. Uh, at the moment, I was actually meant to release my 
first solo album there in June this month. Yeah. <laughs> we all know it's, it's impossible to get into the studio at the moment. So the album's rescheduled for um, hoping to record now, fingers and toes crossed, in November uh, with maybe a December release. So busy, you know, at the moment, even composing, you know, I'm very into composition, so I'm composing um, pieces still for getting the, the album finalised and ready. Um, so busy with that, yeah. And and then just more recently, um, I was awarded the BBC and Arts Council Young Musician Platform Award. Mm, congratulations so, on that. Thank you very much. So I was very lucky to get that. And it's it's been an amazing award. So that's the project I'm doing is the album with the award. And then we've had loads of opportunities with, for performances, you know, and live broadcasts and uh, it was amazing there last May and um, I got to perform as a soloist with the Ulster Orchestra in um, in Belfast in the Ulster Hall and you know they learned my compositions and we had a great composer from the north Graham Stewart we had him on board as well and Graham arranged you know the orchestral arrangements all for it, my compositions and and that so that was that was amazing you know so the had loads of opportunities this this year and last year with with the award so it's been great I'm sure, yeah, and that's yeah. uh, so Christmas talker for like uh, next Christmas. And nice yeah, hopefully and it'll be hopefully it'll be here for the Christmas stockings. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Um, how would you describe your your flute playing style today? A tricky enough question. Um, I'd say that it's definitely it's a combination of all the people I've even played with throughout the years. You know, I feel like you learn so much from your peers from your friends from who you play with you're always picking up with things you like or you know even albums you know I'd listened to a lot recently to Breton music and you know I love the Breton music because I think their tone and their use of harmonics is amazing you know and um, so I definitely think John Michelle you know would definitely be a massive influence a massive influence and um, and then obviously you know Seamus Tansy um you know his use of the I'd say his use of the higher octave he's a very decorative player and I I probably would describe my playing as decorative you know um and although it's with a mix of the north you know because I'm obviously from the north so I'd say I have a bit of the northern punchy you know driving style as well um but it's been lovely having a teacher from Sligo because maybe that's been incorporated into my flute playing as well you know um yeah, just and um, Mike McGoldrick as well. I would have listened to him when I was a kid, like most other, you know, young flute players um, coming out of the woodwork now. But um, the main ones would definitely be probably Seamus Tansy and Jean Michel. I say would have really shaped my flute playing over the last okay. last while. Yeah. Yeah. Now and I then, could see the Sligo influence in your flute playing okay. from what I heard. You know, yeah. and uh, I really enjoyed the, the tone. This is like what what stood out to me when I, I obviously you know watched the video and uh we'll, we'll come back to that later but watch the video and uh, yeah. i think you have a very really fine tone that's really really enjoyable thank you very much uh and and you mentioned like breton uh music it's fun that was actually my next question because like yeah. the, the main video on youtube that that i found was of a breton waltz mm -hmm. and so that would have been my question you know are you also influenced by other trad music uh, yeah, I definitely am. And I think that stemmed from, um, well, I always would have listened to like, world music and other musics, you know. And then in my own compositions, you, you'd probably hear that, you know, stemming through. Um, and, you know, I suppose a lot of that influence would come from, I went on to study music actually as my undergrad graduate degree in a place called Dundalk in County Live, um, DKIT, did, studied music there. And, you know, we would have got there would have been great teachers up there who would have had an interest. Like there's um, a flute player from Dublin, Eamon Dabara, um, and Eamon would have been into, you know, like interested in listening to other musics. And he sort of introduced me to the Breton scene, you know, and introduced me to John Michelle as well. Um, so I suppose from going to Dundalk, you know, that's where it really sparked my interest for the Breton music. And then in later years there, I did a master's in UL in the Irish World Academy. And I was very lucky that we got a master class with Jean Michel, and um, Sylvan was there as well, and it was great. And that's where I actually got the waltz that you're talking about, um, the, the 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 track. And um, Sylvan gave me that. I think it was Erwin Hammond that 
that composed it. So okay, yeah. yeah. Another grapefruit player. Yeah, another grapefruit player, no. There's some collection of them out in Brittany and in, in France as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, like the the collection is rich on both sides, you know, of the pond. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Even like being, you know, from France, from my own understanding and my perspective on the Breton music, it's really rich because you can have different dances from one town to the other. Yeah. So there's definitely like some interesting pieces in there too. Um Back to Irish music. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually should start another podcast for Breton music because there's as much as many things to say about that. Definitely. <laughs> um, um, what would be your uh, piece of advice for, piece of advice from like a teacher perspective to someone starting the flute? Well, as you know, the flute's a very physical instrument. Um, you know, it's not the like not to diss any other instruments, but it's not you know it's not like person something or you know whatever it's okay. very physical you know it's your whole diaphragm your lungs so I would say probably the most important thing for me um would be embouchure um you know and definitely making sure that you don't rush onto the flute you know make sure you've in some way you know not perfected we're never done learning but got a good grab on the whistle first um for the finger work and then it just means that you can really focus on on the flute you know on getting that rich rich uh, tone you know and um, and the embouchure is so important you know even like your muscles all here just working on them even I would always say to students for ages to take the top part off the flute and just constantly you know breathing breathing exercises and even your stopwatch and your phone you know uh, click it and write down how many seconds you got you know on yeah. one day and then try and build in that constantly so you're working so work on your on your breathing and your embouchure and definitely make sure that your finger work is you know developed to a good enough standard before you consider starting the flute and um, yeah and so like today like you mentioned you started with the whistle and went on to the flute later on do you still yeah. play the whistle today is it do you still consider this as a like you know a major instrument in your playing or have you moved on to the flute and kind of gave up or stopped playing the whistle it's yeah you know obviously i would it would be more of definitely more of a flute person person than whistle but i would still i'd still lift up the whistle like and you know i'd be addicted nearly to buying whistles <laughs> as well you know i would see them online like oh god i don't really need another one but you know you can never you're never you're never done buying them like in all the different keys and that and i suppose then the interest is always there for the whistle and i love the sweet tone of it and you know it is a nice contrast from the flute and i definitely would pick it up but um, I suppose more recently I've started picking it up more, but I definitely um, would be more inclined to spend most of my time on the flute, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I, I read a little bit, you know, about, about you and, and uh, you've toured in many countries. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have one memory or a specific encounter that really stands out, you know? What would be your number one, like, something you remember, you know, that will stay with you forever from all the touring and concerts and... Yeah, uh, oh God, there's, there's been a lot of great memories with different musicians throughout the years. Um, and I suppose the or musicians you go over with, you know, they make your whole experience, you know, what it is. Um, something that stands out for me would probably be Brazil. I think it was, oh, let me, let me think of the year now. I think it could have been 2014 or 2015. Um, we actually went out there to play, um, it was, we went out to play and teach. Um, it was with some of the people from, you remember I was telling you, went to DKT in Dundalk um, to do my undergrad. So a group of us went out to Brazil and it was amazing because we collaborated with a Brazilian band over there and got a couple of gigs with them too. So I love, you know, stepping out of the, obviously love Irish trad music and that's what I'm definitely rooted in, but it was lovely to collab with the, Brazilian band over there and yeah it was just a really enjoy enjoyable experience and even I, I love teaching over there as well you know they were very keen to learn more um about the Irish traditional thing so yeah probably Brazil okay yeah um what would be today your like your practice routine like what do you do on a daily or weekly basis um I would like I probably wouldn't have something set in stone that I do you know, all the time. But something I've been working on recently would be, um, more recently would be working on my harmonics, you know, 
um, a lot, and I suppose perfecting the this area, the the embouchure for harmonics. I'd maybe start off with, you know, as usual, a couple of tunes or something, and get lashed in to get warmed up, and then probably work on on harmonics. You know, more recently have anyway. Yeah. There's a great deal of tunes from Jean Michel actually playing on harmonics. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, and I got I actually got two new flutes recently from uh, Gilles Lehart. So oh, nice. um, yeah, so I got two new flutes from him, and they're oh they're beautiful when you play harmonics in them as well. You know, they're just nearly made for it. Like <laughs> lovely. So yeah. All right. Um, what would be a couple of tunes you like to play? anytime like your go-to tunes you know that you know you, you master them they could come out anytime oh there's so many aren't there um <laughs> there are many so <laughs> though, but everybody definitely has go-to tunes you know and they definitely do and i suppose for me anyway it would you know it would come down to who who am i with where am i you know like so say if it was a session or something it would be who i'm with um like if I'm with my sister, it might be like a couple of jigs that we would play together a lot. Um, if, you know, I would I would play a lot with a guitar player called Rory Canaan from Armagh. And, you know, we would obviously have sets together then that we would gig with. Um, so we might warm up with maybe a set of reels or a set of jigs, you know. It's usually always jigs or reels. Um, but, yeah, I suppose the people I'm with would really make a difference to that. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, what would you say is very specific, or what would you like the most about Irish trad music compared to other styles? Because you've explored, you know, other styles. What would you like the most about Irish trad tunes? Um, I suppose you know, you can really, they can really be different. You know, the the, the amount of parts that are on the, in them. You know, there's some three, four, or five part tunes and some of the parts you think, wow, am I actually in the same, is this definitely the same tune or whatever, you know? But then there's always that recurring theme or whatever that brings you back in. Um, I like how free it is now, you know, especially now, um, people are very open to any composition within traditional music, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I suppose I like the, the freedom of it as well, you know? And the harmonic structure, I love the harmonic structure of them as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're obviously in a very, very weird, you know, situation with the COVID and everything happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you think that will impact, uh, like, Irish trad players in general, Irish trad musicians, who are like, you know, making a living out of, you know, playing gigs or giving classes? Like, uh, what's your perspective on that? Well, it's just it's been a very strange time, hasn't it? Um, I mean, I was I was out in America there um, in Washington D.C., and I left I left here, and it was everything was well. There was a lot, obviously, a lot of talk about COVID, but I didn't think it would ever come down to this, you know. So I left here and went to Washington and came back, and the whole place was in lockdown. And um, so I went out and um, to do a couple of gigs. I'm sure I did one event, and then the rest was cancelled, you know. And um, and I suppose since it's come back, you know, pe like musicians, it's open and it's sort of in a way, it's the, po the positive thing to take from it is people have had more time now to sit back and actually practice. And even there's a lot of people composing now as well, which they mev maybe never would have had the time, you know, to do before. Um, but, you know, it's, there's a lot of online stuff going on at the minute. It's actually a very lucky stage for people looking to learn because they can literally get any player <laughs> they want um, at any side of the world because it's all online at the moment. Um, so that that end of it's positive, you know. If you're, if it's, if the negative side, I suppose, is you know it's very up in the air and it's a hard time for musicians because they don't know when they're going to be gigging again, you know. Um, and not even just the financial end of it. It's kind of like. You know, if you're if you're if you come from a musical family where music is your social outlet, you know that's all just being grabbed away, and it's you know it's like there's like an eeriness to it. You know, the there's no, it's just it's not as nice without without live music. You know, um, it's great. I mean, all the online concerts that everyone's doing, and it's it's brilliant. You know, um, they have a great platform, and you know, listeners all around the world now. But 
I do think it's a very strange and I suppose I just don't like the uncertainty of it. You know, we don't know when we're going to get back to the life and w and w when we get back, will it be the same? You know, will there be the same capacity or what? Yeah, so good and bad from it. Yeah, but a lot yeah. of Wow. Well, what I can share from, you know, my side of, of you know, the palm is yeah. we have actually restarted sessions here. Right. And, and yeah, yeah, we've been able to go back to bars and restaurants. So sessions yeah. are slowly starting back, but it feels nice and, mm. and uh, it doesn't feel that different, you know, in the end. Yeah, and I think it'll make us appreciate, it'll make us appreciate more, you know, having live music and having so many musicians around. Um, our bar is open on the, I think it's the 3rd of July, but I don't know, there's no mention of like whether music's coming in straight away at the start. I, I doubt that that'll happen, you know, straight away, but yeah. we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned an album project. Um, do you have any other like musical ventures going on? Do you like so? You, do you only play solo? Do you also play in, in different bands or? Yeah, I well, I would play a lot with I mentioned either Rory Canan. He's from from Armagh. I would do a lot with him. He's a great guitar player and singer. And um, so it's nice doing gigs with him because of the mix of the songs as well in there. And I would sing a bit myself too. Um. So if that went on, and then I would also play with a harp player from County Clare called Ashleen Lyons. Um, so Ashleen and I have been playing for a few years together now, and we've done a few gigs and that. Um, and yet the harp and the flute dynam dynamic I particularly love. You know, it's just such a nice, a lovely dynamic together. It's, yeah, and I think we both have the same with the same interest in music as well. You know, we like the same areas of music, and yeah, so. Working with them, and then the the album I'm doing it down in Belfast with Donal O'Connor in Redbox okay. Studios. So, yeah, really looking forward to getting that on the road at the moment. Oh yeah, that's a great yeah. studio. I'm sure the sound great. of it will be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, before moving on to the last question, um, do you have any website or or a page that you want to share with the viewers out there? Yeah. Well, I would just put all I put all my music gigs and gig dates and everything on my just my normal Facebook. So if you just type in Martha Guiney to Facebook and the same as Instagram. Um Instagram's public, it's just Martha Guiney as well. So yeah, and then you can, right. you can book lessons from there as well. So Yeah, because you also give lessons online, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, Over wow, well, we'll just put the link the links down below on uh, on the yes. screen. And um and the last question I have is my usual last question. Uh, what foods do you play on? Okay, so I'd be a big Sam Murray fan. Um, when I was seven, like I said, I was, went down to Seamus um, and, you know, for my lessons. And then I think it was a week later, you know, Seamus had said to me, go to Sam Murray and get a flute. So went to Sam Murray, went down to his workshop. I'm a left-handed player, so it's great getting, went down and got measured up for a lefty flute. First flute was the keyless and then got a fully keyed Sam Murray and... I'm still playing it, and I've got um, I've got an F flute from Jesus Le Heart. I've got a B flat from him as well. Um, Seamus Tansy gave me an E flat uh, flute, and we still are trying to work out who made it. There's no stamp, nothing on it. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't know who made it. Um, yeah, so that would be the makers. Main one would be Sam Murray from a flute, and then she was more recently, yeah. All right. All right, the first one, Guinness or Smithix? Smithix. Okay, jig or reel? Jig. F or B flat? F. Flute or whistle? Flute. Fratton or rudel? Rudel. Pipers or rockstro grip? Pipers. Okay, crown or roll? Um, roll. And slow or fast? Medium, <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah, so the pick between some fast, fast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to honor the you know Northern Ireland roots. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. It was really nice to to meet you. You know, in in, in person. <laughs> yeah, and thanks and, for having uh, me on. 
yeah it was it was great to share like uh that you know 20 28 minutes or so um is there anything like any last piece of information you want to share before we wrap up um no that's really it just yeah that's everything i think great well thank you very much martha have a great night you too and thanks for having me on michelle great to meet you thanks bye-bye yeah, bye-bye bye -bye. Thank you for watching. It was another great show in the series Shaping the Irish Flute. If you liked the show, remember to give us a thumbs up or a like down below the video and to join us on the newsletter irishflutelessons.com, on YouTube, on Facebook. Leave us a comment, share a message with us. We're always happy to read your thoughts and feedback. Have a great week and see you next week.